Welcome back to another Satoshi Club video where today I'm going to guide you through the benefits of decentralized storage. There are three platforms that we're going to discuss today. We're going to talk about the benefits of decentralized storage compared to centralized storage. And I'm going to talk about how you can take advantage of becoming a storage provider or a storage user on one of these decentralized platforms. So before we get into it, if you're interested in anything AI, blockchain or anything slightly innovative, Make sure to follow Satoshi Club on CoinMarketCap to learn more about all of these things and join a community of like-minded people. Quite a lot of like-minded people, so to say. But let's move right into it. We live in a world where all of our data is digitized. Debit cards, documents, photos, wallets, and even passwords are usually kept in centralized data storage like AWS, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure. So today I'm going to talk to you about what decentralized storage is and the brightest examples of this technology put straight into action. Some of the traditional data storage challenges come in four major downfalls, right? First of all, we have cost monopolization. With budgets of hundreds of millions of dollars, big companies such as Amazon and Google can offer services at a price below average for years. This eliminates the competition and allows them to then later on increase the prices once again, harming the end user, which is you and I, right? A single point of failure. When discussing centralized data storage services, we refer to massive servers with hundreds of thousands of storage elements placed in one location. A breach at that location means thousands of terabytes of data could end up in the hands of malicious actors. Privacy. It's no secret that Facebook, Google, and all the tech giants have access to all our data. That's the reason behind their success. The ability to market potential clients to hundreds of thousands of businesses around the world. And we have scalability challenges where the space in these centralized storages is limited and offers very little potential to scale up because even to add a few hundred terabytes of data space, companies such as Google and Microsoft must invest millions, if not tens of millions of dollars into infrastructure, personnel, and so on. Now let's move into how decentralized storage actually works. There are techniques to ensure security, scalability, and privacy. And we're going to talk about the first provider on our list today, which is Earth Storage. Earth Storage within the Earth framework serves as a robust cloud storage solution, offering users a secure, private, and cost-effective alternative to major players like Amazon S3 or Google Cloud. When users upload files to Earth Storage, the files are split into smaller parts called shards. Each shard is encrypted for security, ensuring that nobody outside the user can read or analyze the stored data. The files also have extra backup shards in case of emergencies. These shards are distributed across Earth infrastructure nodes, which are operated by individuals worldwide, sharing their surplus computer space. The locations of these shards are recorded in Earth's decentralized database, and when users need their files back, the application requests the shards from the nodes. Even if some shards are missing, the files can be reconstructed using a special coding technique. Earth Storage employs its patented proof of honesty consensus mechanism to ensure the stored shards are secure, nodes that perform well are rewarded, and Earth Storage operates without a centralized authority controlling everything, which makes it resistant to many common problems. In the future, the source code will be open for anyone to inspect and contribute. Now we have Internet Computer Protocol. In contrast to Earth, the Internet Computer Protocol or ICP takes a unique approach. It uses smart contracts for secure and infinitely scalable data storage. These smart contracts, known as canisters, consist of WebAssembly, bytecode, and isolated data storage. Each canister has its storage, which is altered only when the canister executes code. Canisters are placed on subnets, which are the primary architectural components of the Internet Computer Protocol. Subnets are independent blockchains that operate on nodes in globally distributed data centers. A single subnet can securely host numerous smart contracts with dozens of subnets currently active and unexpected growth. Each canister's code and data are stored on every node within its subnet, ensuring fault tolerance in the event of node issues. And this replication is facilitated by the ICP, which features a high throughput consensus mechanism and an efficient WebAssembly virtual machine, all supported by blockchain. Now, lastly, we have Filecoin, which is built on the same foundation as the IPFS protocol, a peer-to-peer -peer distributed storage network that uses content addressing to create permanent data references. However, unlike IPFS, Filecoin introduces an incentive layer to promote reliable storage and access to content. Users basically pay to store their files with storage providers and they're responsible for the proper storage and verification of these files over time. 
Now, storage availability and pricing are not controlled by a single entity. Uh, instead, Filecoin establishes open markets for file storage and retrieval, facilitating broad participation. Storage of Web3 native NFTs, metaverse, game, assets, and uh, permanent storage, and pretty much everything is able to be stored on Filecoin. And it also supports a wide range of data formats, including audio and video files. Quite versatile and quite interesting as well. Now, some of the advantages of decentralized storage come in three formats. First of all, cost saving. For instance, Earth saves up to 80% of costs by utilizing an optimized decentralized infrastructure globally. To illustrate Earth's cost efficiency, let's examine some figures. Imagine storing 1,024 terabytes of data per year and downloading the entirety of it each month. Earth will cost 981,000 per year. AWS would cost 1.4 million per year, almost 50% more. Google Cloud will cost 1.8 million per year, a lot more. And Microsoft Azure will cost 1.2 million per year. Quite a little bit of money for data. And as you can see, decentralized storage beats centralized storage when it comes to cost. Security and reliability, right? A crucial advantage of decentralized data storage is its enhanced security. Distributing data across multiple nodes, as ICP does, significantly reduces the risk of data breaches, and it also increases resilience to cyber attacks. Now, it's important to note that even if one node is compromised, companies like Earth shard and encrypt the data before storing it, right? This means that even if a hacker accesses and decrypts the data, it would be incomprehensible to them. Another key benefit is the improved reliability and fault tolerance that a decentralized system has, ensuring that even if one node fails, the data remains accessible from other nodes. Now, obviously, you have the full data ownership and fast retrieval, so you have complete control and ownership of your data, and these decentralized systems often offer faster data retrieval by sourcing information from nearby nodes. For example, with Earth, you can retrieve terabytes of data within seconds, making the process more user-friendly and advantageous for both retail and institutional grade customers. Now, in conclusion, decentralized storage providers represent the future of data storage. Decentralization offers a better and more efficient solution to existing challenges. It's faster, more secure, and infinitely more private than its centralized counterparts, not to mention its cost effectiveness and scalability. Uh, in the example that I gave you before with Earth, for example. Therefore, if you have a substantial amount of data, such as crypto memes, and are unsure where to store them, choosing a decentralized storage provider from the ones mentioned above would be an ideal choice. Thanks for watching this video. Drop a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.